Die Sprachübertragung beginnt jetzt. Alle Teilnehmer befinden sich im Zuhörermodus. Hello attendees, this is Janina speaking to you and I'm going to hold a nice little webinar for you today. It is called Dynamic Event Scheduling Using RSS Feeds. Sounds awesome, right? I'm so happy I came up with a dynamic word. So much better. Okay, what do we have to expect from today's webinar? First of all, I'm going to show you the event viewer, which is the tool that we're going to use for scheduling events. Um, what we want to do is read out the times of sunset and sunrise from the BBC weather RSS feed and set up a routine and widget designer to process the data we receive and then put that all in the event viewer, have our dynamic events create and all of that should happen once a day completely without you having to interfere anything here. So you just set up the system, set it up once and then leave it running for a couple of years. Where would I need something like this? For example, um, in the foyer of a big enterprise, a big company, where they have um, working hours all day long and they want a nice little routine, uh, maybe a little video playing when the sun rises and a video playing when the sun sets, maybe also some shut on or shut off commands for lighting. All of that could be programmed into a routine like this. Um, after taking a look at the BBC weather feed, we are taking a look at how to integrate RSS in Widget Designer. Then how do I actually retrieve the data I need with a node system? Take a look at how we adjust the events. And then another approach instead of the node system, how do I do that via scripting? And what else can I do with an RSS feed? Let us get started. What is RSS? Well, it's basically a relatively old application that you have in the internet. It was used mainly for news. So many news websites provide an RSS feed. You usually need an RSS reader. So that's a little extra desktop application at which you can feed several feeds of your favorite newspapers or news websites. And then you can just poll news and read the news, get updated every time without having to access the website. It's a very small format, so it's basically just text or very small images. It's also nice for your computer and network resources. The Event Viewer in Widget Designer. This is luckily a tool available in the free version, so you can use it whenever you want. Let's take a look at it in Widget Designer. You will find it in the top section. There's that nice little uh, calendar icon. And when I place it there, oh, I forgot to remove my events from before. Yes, I want to delete them. It is empty when you open it anew. So how do I create a new event? I just do a right click and add an event. I give it a name. So if I have the sunrise and the sunset routine, I will just say sunrise. <clears throat> Category, we don't have that many events, so we don't need to put them in folders. Um, you can select from when till when it should happen. If in case you have events that happen like every day from nine to five o'clock in the evening, then you could set it up over here and the event would not happen outside of those boundaries. You can have a certain repeat count until date. So that would influence the date you have entered over here or a max count like the event is only supposed to take times, uh, take place 10 times and that's it. We want it endless because it's supposed to go on for many, many years. A repeat maximum of zero just says endless. And a repeat mode, this is a bit like the actions, uh, the, the script timer button, if you remember that, you can enter a couple of seconds or milliseconds at which a script is supposed to be uh, repeated. Now this is a bit larger, so you can have seconds, minutes, even days, months or years. What we want is a daily event. Repeat interval every day, so that's a one. If we want it every second day, I would enter a two. And of course, the script because the event executes a script at the assigned time. <clears throat> I have prepared 
two little macros called sunrise and sunset routine. There's nothing in them right now because we don't need the routine now. I don't have a foyer over here. So you just know you can prepare a macro, put in your routine and have that macro inserted over here. So sunrise routine close and all the information I just entered is over here. Let's do that again for the sunset routine. So sunset days and sunset routine close. And what we want to do now is to dynamically adjust the start date so that every day we can enter a new time, the exact time of sunrise and sunset, and it is executed at the exact times of sunset and sunrise. <clears throat> so let me make that a little smaller. Okay, next point. The RSS feed from BBC Weather. This is a pretty complicated thing if you want to use that. The first thing you have to do is visit the BBC Weather website. Uh, my colleague Thomas, who is being a moderator, I'm so sorry for not introducing you properly. Thomas is going to post the links for you in uh, the chat channel as well. And he's also going to answer your questions. So BBC offers weather service for all major cities on in the world. So if I want to select a city, Cologne, I enter that over here and have my weather forecast. Beautiful sunshine all day. So now comes a complicated part. What you need to do now is go to your, uh, your web address and what you need is your city code. It is this number, that's seven digits and every single city has a different number. We will need that later. So control copy, beautiful. And then we're going to search for the BBC RSS feed. This is not as easy to find as well, except you go to Google and enter BBC Weather RSS. Then you get to exactly this web address where you have two different options, the three day forecast and latest observations. What we need is the forecast. When I click on that one now, it opens the RSS feed itself. So this is what I, the data I want to retrieve in the end. It doesn't look very nice because it's an XML format, but Widget Designer is going to prepare that a bit nicer. And now comes the trick. Over here in your uh, top line, you have a city code and that you need to replace with the one you just copied. So this one, would be the Cologne forecast. You can see that over here. And now copy this complete address. This is the RSS feed address that we need to insert in Widget Designer later. So back to the presentation. That's what I just showed you. Open the three-day forecast and use this web address for inserting in Widget Designer. Back to Widget Designer. The RSS settings, you will find them in the tools menu, which is over here, together with blacklist, email, SMS, that's all of the same region, and the RSS settings. There it is, nice and empty, and this is where you now just paste your link and press add. Beautiful. When I now click on one of those items, you can see that there's text in the body. This is the title. And this is the body information. That's all we have. There's a temperature in it. There's wind information. There's visibility. Good. Yeah, I can see out of my window that it's very clear and beautiful. Um, air pressure, humidity. Well, not too polluted at the moment. And the information we actually want, sunrise and sunset. Beautiful. Don't forget to check the auto poll because if you don't, uh, the feeds are not going to be refreshed automatically. So that one is set up. Let's leave that window over here. And let's check what we need to do now. So let's take a look at the message, message structure. What you saw right now in the RSS window, 
is this. I just entered a couple of new line feeds, so it's a bit uh, better to view. How can we use the information, the structure of this whole thing to retrieve the information we actually want? So if you take a look, you can see that every single element is separated by a comma. That's great, we can use separators to well, separate the elements from each other. What else do we see? Sunrise and sunset, the two things we actually want to have, they are in 24 hours format. So we, first of all, don't need to worry about AM and PM and what and when. We just have uh, the 24 hours format and that's always the exact same length. No matter what time we have over here, this thing has always a fixed length of characters. I think it's 15. We can use that as well. So separated by comma and same length. And the next thing, when we were able to retrieve this over here, we have the hours and minutes split by a colon because we need hours and minutes separately. The node system we are going to use. First of all, we need to input the RSS feed with the RSS input node. Then we are splitting with a comma. Then we are removing the text, sunrise and the CET uh, in the end. Then we need to split it again at the column. And then we are outputting what we have in a variable output node. Let's do that together. So what I have prepared beforehand is four variables. These sunrise and sunset, each of those hours and minutes. That's integer values. They are empty right now. That's where I'm going to write the information that we got. Okay, let's start with the RSS node. You find it in input and tools and set it up here. And there we already got it. Um, you can have several RSS feeds and filter by the RSS ID. So you have only one feed. Um, if it is not set up differently, it just rotates all the feeds that you have so that you have a certain interval, 10 seconds at the moment. And after 10 seconds, the next feed is presented. If you want to have only one special feed, you can specify the single index. I want the first item, which is the today information. The next one is today and the day after tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. So today is number one. Okay. Next thing to do, we want to split. Fortunately, we have a couple of really useful text filter nodes with which you can analyze text really well and nicely. No, it's not what I wanted. Okay, I want the split text node. The input text, uh, now we got all those nice little RSS outputs. I can have the count of elements, I can have the current, so if it's rotating, the current uh, bodies. I can have the single feeds, the last, the current, titles, text, random. So many options to choose from. But what we want is the single text. Apply, and yes, that is what we want. Okay, we have already seen that we want to split and we want to split with a comma character and the count of elements. Of course, now we need to know how many elements we do already have. Now let's check that out. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we want eleven output elements. Apply. Let's keep that here. So, for showing what is actually happening, I'm going to add a little label output so we can see what we are doing. Label number one, and we know it's the last two items. So let's see what number 10 is. There you go, sunrise, 623 CET. That's exactly what we want, and 11. That is the sunset time, perfect. So if you remember what we are going to do now, we want to crop it. We want to remove the sunset part and we want to remove the CET part. So 
fortunately, this is not hard to find. It's just called crop text. Easy doing. So now we're going to take number 10. This is the sunrise time. <clears throat> and we have a couple of different modes in this crop text node. We can have start length. So I um, use the start index of what I want to retrieve and the length that we have. I can have start end. So I define a certain start and end index. We, I can trim it and I can have um, the, well, the back part of the, the word that I want. I am perfectly fine with start length. And now I need to find out what is my start and my length. So let's check it out over here. This is what I have. So, nope. If I start over here and keep in mind that the separator was the comma, so we have to count that white space over here. That's our first symbol, white space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. That is ten. And as this is the first symbol that we want, the zero, is the eleventh character in that string. I need to enter a eleven. How long is the string that I want? It is one, two, three, four, five. Five, apply. And as you can see, I do not see anything over here. This is a specialty of widget designer that I would like to explain to you <clears throat> before I continue. Um, <clears throat> the, the node chain in widget designer works like this. There are input and filter nodes and they are doing things, but the important part concerning the processing that we have are the output labels. The output labels, uh, output nodes, sorry. The output nodes are those that draw the information from all the other nodes. So if something is not happening, especially in filter nodes, it could be that an output node is missing because the output node tells all the elements in the chain before to now process something. This is why we don't see anything over here right now. Let's check that one out. And there it goes. Now you can see that something happened over here. <clears throat> because we needed the output node, the perfect label output node, to tell the crop text node that something needs to happen right now. And you can already see 623, that's exactly what we want. Perfect. Now let's do that again. Filter, crop text. and use that for the sunset. I have done that before, so I know that the sunset has one character less than the sunrise. So it's 10 for the start and next, apply. Okay, let's check in our label node if that's fine. Yes, 1855, wonderful. Okay, and if you remember what comes now, another split because we have the nice little column in the middle with which we can split again. Text split. Use the output and the split character is a column. We have two outputs, the minutes and the hours. Apply and I am now going to directly output that on variables, find them in generic. This is going to be sunrise hours and it's going to be output number one. And I'll just copy paste it. Sunrise minutes and output two apply. And let's check in the variable list if something happened. There we are, sunrise hours, six. That's exactly what we wanted. And sunrise minutes, 23. Perfect. 
Janina, can I interrupt shortly? There's a question from uh, Unai. Um, yes, please. Maybe you can explain a bit if you have variable length uh, to put in the, the para uh, in the parameters of the nodes. Maybe you can explain a bit uh, shortly how you can use variables to change the parameter in the node. Um, I'm not sure if I understand exactly what is meant. So the question is uh, if the uh, if the text in the RSS feed is variable length, can we change that via Ooh. a variable? If you know that, yes, you can. Um, okay, let me just set that one quickly up. Output one and output two and check. Yes, perfect. Okay, um, <clears throat> there's a very easy way to change any kind of output parameter. Let's say, for example, this split node. You might have noticed in the node configuration dialog those little numbers next to the parameters. Those are parameter IDs, which you can use for scripting. So, if you have, for example, <clears throat> um, you want to change this parameter, the just the um, <clears throat> the character. This is possible for all kinds. So you can change the count and number. You can change the text. You can even change uh, the input that is supposed to be selected. Everything is possible. The command you would need for that is node number two dot. Um, set param. So this one lets you set a parameter or a different value for a parameter. Um, it wants first the parameter ID. We check that this is number two if I want to change that. Number two. And what kind of character do I want in there? Let's say an X. Okay, apply and Keep in mind that node configuration dialogs are not updated automatically. So if I want to see a change of this happening, I need to close it. If I now press the button, you can see it has changed the parameter. And this is exactly how you would also change the length in the crop text. Parameter ID number four. You would just enter a different number with this command. But this is, of course, um, you will need to, to know the length in that case. If you don't know the length, uh, you need to search for different ways you can filter. Most things are possible, but not all of them are easy. Did that answer the question sufficiently? I think uh, it did. Thank you. And don't forget to uh, rearrange your split text node, filter node. Yes. Thank you for that hint, Thomas. I would have forgotten. Welcome. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so we got everything that we want. We have our variable output nodes, and we already checked in um, <clears throat> in our variables dialog that they show the correct values. Now all we need to do is update our two events over here. How am I going to do this? I'm a big fan of macros, so I'm going to write another little macro. Scripting, new macro. Uh, how do I call that? Let's call that set. Uh, let's uh, say set new times. Okay. I forgot my PowerPoint presentation. Where you can see that the command that we need is called WD event start date. So what we want to change is the, is the start date and it requires the event name, that one we call sunrise and sunset, year, month, day, hours, minutes and seconds. So seconds we don't care about, we can set that to zero. Hours and minutes we have just retrieved. What do we do with years, months and days so that we always get the correct days? We don't have to write a complete script that analyzes how many days are in one month and 
those nasty years with uh, February 29th are really bad as now. We have something that is a lot nicer. It's called the now variable. Now is a global variable that is predefined by widget designer. And whenever you call it, it is going to return to you the current date, the date that your computer shows. So um, let's uh, check that in a little debug message. Test. As you can see, this is my current time, March 25th, 11, 27. Great. How do I get the information over here, the year, month, and day, which I want from that? Well, now is awesome. No, now provides you with a couple of members. You have already learned about members if you have participated in Mike's training last Friday. So you should know a bit about that. If I now say now.year, which is a property, it returns exactly what I want, the year. And of course, we have the same for month and day as well. So let's start typing our script. It's going to be a bit longer. Event. Start date, there we are. Okay, first of all, the event name, sunrise. Next one, we know that one is now.year, perfect. Then we can enter now dot month. Then we can enter now dot day. And that's all we need. Now all we have to do is enter the sunrise hours that we filled with the correct numbers over here. Sunrise minutes and well, let's say zero seconds. We're not that exact today. Okay. And because copy paste is our friends, I can just copy paste the same thing for sunset and adjust it. Sunset here and sunset here. Okay, let's see if that works. Now, this is the part where you need to pay attention to. Test it and there we go. That's perfect. 623 and 1855. That's exactly what we wanted. The very last step of what we want to do is now schedule that this script is executed once per day. How can, can we do that? Lee? Can, uh, yes. Sorry, just uh, that people can see better what you're scripting. Can you zoom in your scripts a little bit, please? Ooh, yes, you. you are correct. Right, thanks. That is better. <clears throat> I'll leave that over here. So, of course, we can just create another daily event that executes exactly this script. So it pulls the data once per day, maybe early in the morning, updates those times every single day. So let's say that one is called set times. <clears throat> it is an endless day and it's supposed to happen once every day. Now I can end specify a time. So maybe three o'clock. That should work. Sun usually does not rise before three o'clock. Of course, if you are living in uh, the very north or south of regions, this might become a bit difficult. But then you have to worry about other things. And the script called set new times close. Okay, so what happens now is every single day at three o'clock, the script is executed, new data is pulled, and these two times are being updated. Isn't it gorgeous? Yes, it is gorgeous. Okay. Are there any questions up until now before I start with showing how to use scripting. Thomas?
Sorry, sorry, I was not listening. Oh, how dare you? Are there any questions that I could answer now before we proceed to the scripting? Um, no, I tried to answer everything so far, so there are no open questions. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So, node systems are complicated, but so is scripting. Some people prefer the node system because it's a great visual uh, way of seeing what you are doing, and some people prefer scripting. You can do the exact same thing you did over here with scripting. Um, in preparation for that, I want to retrieve the RSS body from that node. So what I do first is I am adding a new variable, a string for the RSS body or text. I leave that empty <clears throat> over here. And I just use the node that I have already set up. Add another variable output node. Oh, come on. It does not like me. There you go. RSS body and single text. That's what we want. Okay, now we got the same text we have over here in our variable. Okay, let us start a new macro. Ooh, this is going to blow your mind. Uh, how are we going to call that? Um, script approach. That's going to be our new macro. Okay. Um, let's check the PowerPoint first. So what we need now is to do the exact same actions we did with the node system. First, we want to split the string. Um, we know we got the separator and the comma, and then we want to retrieve the sunrise and sunset values. How do we do that? Okay, first of all, what I can do is I have uh, created a list variable beforehand, and I called it param list. So this one is going to contain all the different elements we had before, temperature, wind speed, pollution, and the sunrise and sunset time as single elements in a list. Equals RSS body dot split. I am going to explain what I'm doing now in a minute. Okay, so what we have here. RSS body is a string variable, so we have access to the string member. Split is one of those members. It does the exact same thing as the split node does. It uses the comma character, and wherever it finds a comma in the complete body, it splits it and puts a single element in a list. Let me show you what that means with a little debug message. So what we have over here is a very long list. <clears throat> and each of those elements we had before, this is a single list element, this is a single list element, and this is a single one. And of course, sunset and sunrise are single elements, which we can now access. Lists are a complicated and a really useful tool in which a designer so we are probably going to do another webinar about how to use them properly. What you need to know now for now is, here it is, <clears throat> that it contains elements of different kinds. So our list has now, how many was it? 11 elements. Perfect. Everything's in there. How do I retrieve an element from a list? Let me create a local variable for sunrise first. Equals param list. And now, how do I access the, the element? I need to know the index, and I write those in square brackets. So let's say I use number one.
let's see what happens. Test. Okay, so this is what my sunrise currently has. Minimum temperature. You can see that is not the first item in the list. That is because the indexing of the list starts with zero. So this, the first element in the list, is actually index number zero, which means if we want to retrieve sunset and sunrise, which are the 11th and the 10th element in the list, you will need to uh, subtract one by that if you want to access it. So we have number nine for sunrise. Test that. There we go. Sunrise and Number 10. For sunset, if I execute that now, there you go. Sunrise, sunset. That is exactly what comes out of this split text node right now. <clears throat> Perfect. There's just one little thing you need to pay attention to. We are going to use more string members. So there's another split, there's a substring, there's left and right. But this command here does not specify what type of, um, of variable we get. So this is going to be a very generic object type and it is not going to provide you with any kind of um, text members which is why you need to convert that to a string manually before you can use it. Mm, to string. Same over here, dot to string. Now what we have is sunrise is a string variable as well as sunset and we have access to the string members that we need. Okay. I don't know if someone can hear me. It seems we have a little issue with the internet connection. I'm not sure if it's my internet connection or Janina's. Ah, oh, your connection restored. There seem to have been a little network oh. issue. Sorry for that. Ah, they are back again. <laughs> yep. Well, lucky we. Where did you back. lose me? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, internet. Okay, uh, we were trying to replace the crop node over here. So unfortunately, the respective string member that we need is not called crop, it's called substring. So I want to uh, assign a new value to sunrise equals sunrise dot substring. This is what we want. Substring does the exact same thing as the start length parameter over here. You have a start index and you have a length. <clears throat> so start index. Unfortunately, the scripting of widget designer is slightly different than the node system of widget designer. Scripting is oriented on regular programming languages like C sharp or anything like that. And usually all indices in programming languages start with a zero. The same thing we had with the list already. But the crop text node starts with one. So we need to keep that in mind. It's not 11 like here. But if we want the 11th element to be our first thing, we need to enter a 10 because it starts with zero. Okay. From a crop text node, we also know that we need a length of 5.5. 5. Mm -hmm. Let's see how that works out. Okay, perfect. So what we did, we removed this part over here. 
kept only these five characters and that's it. <laughs> Sunset and sunset. And of course, sunset is a little shorter. Test. And there we go. We are nearly finished. <clears throat> so I have prepared a nice little colored presentation for you because we are now going to use the left and right member. So we're not doing the exact same thing as over here and split the text. We are going to use another string member. <clears throat> so the left and right member are working like this. <clears throat> Your current state is, for example, 6.20. <clears throat> That's actually tomorrow's sunrise time. If I now use the right member, I will use the right two characters of my string. And if I have the left member, I use the left two characters of my string, which looks like this. I'm discarding everything that is not in my right two characters and I retrieve the 20. And over here, if I use the left number, I retrieve the left two characters and discard the rest and have the six. So let's check out how that is working. <clears throat> Sunrise dot left two. <clears throat> And see if that actually fits what we want to do. Test. There you go. The 6 and the 23. Awesome. Exactly what we wanted. What we could do now is we create another four little variables and um, set all those to the specific left and right minutes and hours. <clears throat> or we just fill that in the command directly. We already know that one event start date. We have used that before. Sunrise. Now dot year. Now dot month and now dot day. And what we can do now instead of having an extra four lines of code is just simply saying sunrise dot <clears throat> left two, which takes the two left ones, which are the hours, and sunrise dot right two, comma, zero and close the brackets and we can do the exact same thing for the sunset time sunset sunset and the last one sunset apply okay Back to widget designer. Let's check what happens. Okay, those times are of course already the correct ones. So let me just does that work? Yes, it does. Reset that to zero. So I can see that something happens. And test. There you go. The exact same result as before. And now you can also write exactly this macro in this event instead of the other one you had. Script approach. And this is the alternative. Okay. Beautiful. Now you are more or less finished. That's all you needed to do either doing it with notes, nice visualization, or with scripts. 
depending on what you prefer better. And that is basically the content of the training. What other things could you do with an RSS feed like that? So you had weather information. If is it cloudy, is it rainy, does it snow, sunny or whatever? You could filter for these words and start video files according to the weather. Remember the foyer situation where you have someone at the reception and it would be really cool to have a nice little weather display in the back. So everyone who enters or who gets out knows what kind of weather it is. You can retrieve the temperature information and maybe have the reception desk in yellow or red lighting if it's hot or in blue lighting if it's cold. You could even retrieve the wind speed parameter and use a particle system to show the amount of wind speed because particle systems have a wind parameter that you can influence the strength of. If you are going away from that specific weather RSS feed, you can display headlines from any kind of news feed as that little scrolling text that you know from all the news television stations. There are so many different RSS feeds in the internet providing so many kinds of information. You can do basically anything that you want. And of course, you don't even have to use RSS feeds. There are many, many different ways of ingesting data in widget designer. Just get the information from somewhere, ingest it in widget, process it, and do whatever you want to it, with it. Your creativity has no limits there. And of course, uh, the last thing, check out the webinars we offer. Check out the forum for more information and please, please leave some suggestions for webinars you want to see. Check out the help file. Help file is always important. And also check out the YouTube channel where we are going to host all the webinars and additional links and information. I hope you have enjoyed today's event and I hope your heads are smoking right now because there was a lot of information in a lot of time. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Janina. That was great. A great webinar. Um, just uh, wanted to add some uh, one last thing. We both of us will be uh, online still a few minutes to answer maybe some more questions if you have. So put them in the question uh, uh, tab. And uh, yeah, some few minutes will be available for that. And yeah, hope to see you uh, next time for the next webinar. Thank you. Okay. Bye.